Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are getting Harry ready for my big road trip coming up. Right, guys welcome back and those watching in the last few weeks will have seen that i spent a lot of time getting the dash of harry up to what i wanted and it's pretty much there the only thing as i said last week was these end caps uh which are not quite right uh, and need a little bit of uh, tweaking uh one of the good suggestions which is actually what something i may do is actually uh cover them in the purple tartan and uh, that will sort of match in with this strip going around the car um so that might actually be the uh, the best way to finish them off just nicely for those of you who missed it i'll put a link above so you can catch up and um, if you haven't subscribed, please think about it, uh, subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Um, it does help us out and it'll keep you abreast of all of the, uh, the new adventures that I come up with. Um, so uh, this week, I am on my last couple of weeks uh, before I'm going to take Harry here on a um, about a three, four thousand kilometer um, pilgrimage to Tasmania with uh, a bunch of uh, other like-minded um, Porsche enthusiasts uh, and uh, we are going to hopefully have a great time but that means that I need to get all the little niggly things on Harry sorted out before I go and uh, at this stage there's a couple of things I have to have a look at under the car. All right, well, uh, because Harry has been kicking around in the garage for a while now and, uh, and I've moved it a couple of times, I have noticed something that was worrying me and that was a small patch of oil on the ground. But instead of coming from the engine right at the back, it was coming from the middle of the car up here and I was very concerned um, that I was gonna have to pull the engine out and do something about the, um, the, the front of the gearbox, the nose of the gearbox, which I removed earlier for those who saw when I first got this on the road. Um, this is a, uh, a cable driven speedo in this early 915 gearbox and uh, the, there was a, basically the drive had fallen back into the case and everything was leaking out. That has not been the problem, that seems to be holding and uh, I'll show you what I've just discovered. So what, I've, what I have discovered is that the oil was dripping off of this uh, gearbox mount here. And it appears that it's actually the oil is coming from the seal from the, uh, the shift linkage uh, shaft that's coming out the end. So um, I've done a little bit of research and it sounds like it's an absolute pig to get the seal out, but it is possible to get the seal out without taking the gearbox out of the car. So I have one on order and uh, that hopefully means that I don't have to pull the whole engine out before I go because I really didn't want to do that. All right, it's been a couple of days, but my new seal for the shifter shaft is arrived. So I'm going to now try and get the old one out, which is going to be fun. Um, and uh, see if we can swap this out without removing the gearbox. I have read a thread on Pelican Parts that says it's possible. So uh, I'm going to give it a crack. So first things first is we're gonna get inside, disconnect the linkage, and then I'm gonna get it up in the air and see if we can get the old seal out. All right, so the seal I need to get is right in here. Um, it's probably very difficult to see on camera, but what I need to be able to do is get a small screwdriver in, inside this uh, the edge of the seal here, and then try and pry it out. Now, uh, apparently it's really tough, it's going to take a bit of work and uh, we're just going to give it a go and see how it works. Okay, so I got the, uh, the seal off. It took a little bit of prying and I actually had to make myself a little tool. There you go. I ground back an old screwdriver. This was a Phillips head screwdriver I had. So I just ground it down and made a little bit of a hook. And uh, yeah, that managed to get in there and, uh, and peel it out quite nicely because with the flatheads, I was having no joy. But this thing just got in there, hooked in and peeled it out. Um, it's hooking onto the metal inside the, the, uh, the seal. So it's not actually sort of scraping any of the, uh, the edges. It's all rounded off and everything. So um, there you go. If you need to make up a similar tool, 
get an old screwdriver. I've got plenty of sort of junk, uh, you know, old screwdrivers lying around and uh, ground it down and made a perfect tool to hook it out and now the seal's out. So let's put the new one in. Okay, so the seal is now in. Um, it wasn't too difficult. So I cut myself a short little piece of aluminum tube, which is nice and square on the end, slid that over the top of the shaft, and then I used some vice grips, which I clamped so that they were nice, big and sloppy over the shaft, so they weren't grabbing hold of the shaft in any way, um, but just so they would sit on the end of this piece of aluminum tube. And then I could just hammer lightly onto the, uh, the vice grips to get a nice square press into the end of the uh, uh, gearbox and that looks good. It uh, yeah, was not overly difficult. I did have trouble getting it out at first, but making that tool with the uh, screwdriver really helped. So while the car's on the hoist, another thing that I wanted to check was that I was hearing a clunk coming from this front corner of the car. And uh, I got one of the good things to check whenever you've got a, uh, uh, a road trip is, is checking things like wheel bearings and just looseness. And by jacking a car up and just rocking the wheel, you can feel whether there's loose bearings or, or anything. And there's no clunking there. Like it all seems to be good. The, the, um, the steering shaft and everything is good. Um, the uh, um, in and out, but what I did notice is if I do this, it's quite loose in here. There's something, something that's loose. So that's gonna require further investigation. Whereas this other side, there's nothing. This side is good. So let's have a little bit look further into what this side could actually be uh, causing my rattle. And on closer inspection, I don't think the, the uh, camera can really pick it up, but uh, the cap that's holding the shock in is, uh, is loose and it's undone itself up in here. So uh, I'm going to drop that suspension arm out right now and see if I can do something about tightening it up. Not exactly the textbook way to uh, pull it apart, but I've uh, pulled the shock out and uh, uh, and tightened it up uh, a lot more. I've, I've actually got in and actually sort of uh, really tightened that uh, clamp. It's just it's just basically there's a screw in top that holds the shock in place because the shock is just a, a sleeve, it just inside the sleeve. So uh, hopefully now that is nice and secure. So uh, while we've got the wheel off. I think we might go back and have another go at refitting that washer bottle. So those of you watching a few weeks ago will have seen that I uh, pulled out the original uh, 911 washer bottle for the uh, to fit the aircon condenser in underneath this front guard here. And um, at the same time, uh, Classic Retrofit has a kit to convert a Boxster washer bottle or a 996 washer bottle um, into the uh, the same system and. Um, I had an issue that the the motor had burnt out on my uh, on on the Rockster's washer, so uh, I bought a replacement. It's quite cheap. It's an Audi VW part. It's a quite a regular part that's used by lots of different people. So um, it should hopefully be a relatively straightforward fit into the uh, into the system now, and I'll have a washer bottle back in Harry for my road trip. So it looks like we've got working washers, but uh, the angles are a little bit screwed up. So I might just uh, have a little play around and see if I can uh, realign them and get them spraying at the windscreen and not over the roof. Okay, that was really simple and that I didn't actually realize they were that easy to adjust. So basically inside the, the washers are, ba are just like ball bearings with a little hole in the middle of it. And that's um, 
uh, you can just you can just get a I've just got a little tiny pick and just move the ball around and adjust the uh, the aim. So now I'm happy with the aim of all the uh, washers. Um, that part is done. Yay! So the next thing I've got to tackle, which is much more of a concern, is I have actually noticed that I have been losing brake fluid from the uh, front circuit. And after a little bit more inspection, I have actually found that uh, one that, that uh, master cylinder in the center there is actually leaking. So I'm going to have to pull that out and uh, replace a brake master cylinder. All right, well, that was a lot of messing around to actually get the master cylinder out, and um, and it was leaking in out of the end here. This is one of the ones I've got for the Alfa Ferrari. This is what I got for now, and um, it should hopefully work. We'll check it, make sure it uh, goes in fine and seals, and uh, see if we can bleed up some brakes. All right, I've got Mrs. Jeff in the car to give me a hand. Uh, I've got some uh, new race brake fluid I'm going to put in, so going to top it up and uh, bleed these brakes, and fingers crossed. I can actually get all the air bubbles out and uh, it's all going it's all going to work. All right, so I have been working actually for the last couple of days now in the background, literally two whole days trying to bleed these brakes. I changed over the master cylinder like I mentioned earlier that had a leak and I put in a brand new master cylinder and I could not get the pedal to, uh, to bleed. So I was trying all sorts of different things. I didn't bench bleed the uh, master cylinder at the start, which is actually where you get a, uh, the master cylinder. This is the, uh, the first one I tried. Um, and you, you put it on the bench and you make sure you bleed it on the bench to get rid of all of the air bubbles that are stuck in the brand new uh, master cylinder. And then put caps on it, put it back in the car. And then once it's in the car, then you, um, I was connecting it up and um, uh, connect it up to the reservoir, to the back here, and then pump it, and this is where the outlet is, and you uh, I pump it and bleed everything out of there first with that loose, and then connect it up, and then bleed it to the, uh, to the calipers. And do you think I could get the thing to bleed? I could not. I tried a second cylinder. Um, big shout out to uh, Clem at Clemtech, who's uh, the, uh, the, the local Porsche specialist. Um, if any of you guys up here have uh, Porsches, I recommend getting him, uh, getting him to service it. Uh, really good stuff. He does my Macan. Uh, he even lent me the uh, pressure bleeder. So this is, uh, I've, I've got a couple of um, different types of bleeders for these cars. I've got this, which is a vacuum bleeder. So you stick it on the nipple and it, uh, and it sucks the fluid through. And these things are pretty much rubbish, I think. Like, I've never had any success with it. Uh, the trouble is, is as soon as you crack the bleeder, it sucks in air around the thread, so you see air bubbles and you can't really get a good solid bleed with them. It's, it's okay-ish, but I really think this is junk. The way to go is these sort of things. So this, basically, instead of um, bleeding from this end, you actually, this has got um, fluid in it already. You uh, have, there's a cap that screws onto the top of your reservoir and this goes into it, pressurizes fluid into the reservoir so you don't run out of fluid in the reservoir. This is all, all stored in here. And also it's pressurizing the reservoir. So as soon as you crack the, uh, the nipple, you're not gonna get any air going back in. It's already coming out and that's the way to go. And even still, even with this, I couldn't crack it. Two master cylinders, two days, tearing my hair out, getting covered in brake fluid for ages, going through bottles and bottles and bottles of brake fluid. And um, in the end, I realized that um, these calipers have two bleed nipples. I just it completely missed it. I didn't realize these old ones did. I'm sure I never bled them the first time when I first put these in. So um, there's actually a bleed nipple on the inside as well that I didn't crack. As soon as I did that, air bubbles came out, brakes bled, problem sorted, the relief was insane. So, um, big tip, these are the early S calipers. These are actually quite good calipers for these uh, old 911s. Um, and uh, we have brake pedal, so I am gonna be okay to go to uh, Tasmania because it's coming up close. So, the next thing I'm gonna tackle is, um, 
I need to put some paint protection film on the front bar because this car is going to cop it. We're going to be going on some rough roads. There's going to be lots of guys who've probably got sticky tyres on that I'm going to be following who are going to shower this car in, um, in rock chips. And uh, the less rock chips, the better. So let's see if I can make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more protected up front. So let me preface this by showing you that this front bar is already hammered. If this, uh, if this thing will focus, hammered with stone chips all over it. Um, it's hard to get it to focus, but yeah, like, so it's definitely far from neat, but I just want to stop it from turning completely white uh, from exposing all the fiberglass. So let's give this a bit of a wash and then we'll see what I can do about putting some PPF on there. All right, so I've got a, uh, a bit of the paint back and uh, I've got a little brush. I'm just gonna go around and brush touch up all the, uh, the little holes. It's not gonna be perfect, it's gonna be far from it, but it'll just uh, make it look a little bit better. This is a definitely a temporary solution. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo this bumper at some stage because the trouble is, is that when I built it, I had the car sitting statically and didn't realize how much the wheels swing when, um, when they're out. And so I can't actually space them out to meet the outside of the guards. Um, so that's one thing that's always, always got to me about the look of this car is that uh, the wheels have to sit inboard um, a long way because if I go out at all, they, uh, they touch when you, when you turn. So it's something we'll have to uh, tackle at a later date. So let's go through brush touch now and uh, get it all ready to go. All right, well that is uh, quite an ugly PPF job, but uh, it's, it's covered in all the main areas so that I'll be protected at least reasonably uh, before I head to Tasmania and uh, get absolutely hammered on some of those very rough roads. And um, like I said, it, it's, it's very difficult doing a nice, neat PPF job over a bunch of paint chips. Really want the paint to be flat first, so the, the rough nature didn't help, and all the complex curves. But I've got something there that's going to protect me uh, for now, so let's move on. All right, and that's it. All of the big things that I wanted to get done on Harry uh, are done, and I think I'm ready for our road trip. I have actually had the air conditioning gas and uh, I actually tried it for the first time today while I was ducking out and getting some stuff. Um, and it's working really well. It's, um, it, it sort of switches off when you're at idle. So it's um, not as good when, it's, when you're sitting there in traffic. But as soon as it's got going, really nice and cold. Um, almost as good as a modern car. Still not quite, uh, like no tinting on the windows definitely makes a difference. So I'm getting blasted by the sun through the windows. So that's something we're gonna have to tackle, but uh, I'll give you more of an a, uh, update on the air conditioning when we get to it. But um, that's it for this week. So um, as always, um, like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying these videos, please join us on Patreon to watch the videos a day early ad free. We'll see you in the next one. See you guys. Hey.